So it's quite weird and quite funny because you literally, I literally just rock up with, with my suitcase and my bag like <laughs> yeah. that and knock on the door and I'm just like, hi, I'm just coming to live yeah. with you now. One of the things was um, caffeine gum on the side and that was what I'd literally packed. I'd packed that exact Healthspan caffeine gum packet yeah. two years earlier in the factory. Right. I actually told her I, I wasn't really going anywhere. Um, and then me and my brother just walked up on, on, on like, the doorstep of my mum. I'm here just went, five, six months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. Welcome back to Life of a Kitman podcast. Uh, this week's guest is Joe Tomlinson. Say hi, Joe. <laughs> hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Excellent. Jonah's with us as always. Hi, Jonah. Hi, Jonah. Brilliant. Love that. Um, as always, we're going to jump straight in to Joe's five-a-side team. So, Joe, yeah. take your board. Take that. Uh, there's your pen. Thank you. Nice and red, like uh, it. Maybe do formation first. We'll go through your players. We'll go through your manager. Yeah. And then we'll look at a kit that you would like your team to play? Yes. Okay, so let's go. So I'll just do that. So there's going to be a keeper. I'll have... You have got some magnets there if you want to use them. On the top left. Oh, yeah, that's a good shot, actually. I didn't... Um, probably should have done that. It's all right. Oh, no, so, I'll just use the outfield one as a keeper. There we go. Decent. There we go. There we got, go. There, got there in the end. We're rocking and rolling. So one key... Obviously, one keeper. One centre-back I'll have. One defender. Um, and then I'll have kind of three guys that... I'll have one higher up and then than the other two, but there's going to be so much rotation. Yeah, I've got, uh, yeah, I've got some guys he, in there that are just going to as well. Guys. He's five O's. There's going to be a lot of rotation, a lot of movement, a lot of, yeah. So uh, that's kind of what my formation is going to look like. Cool. Um, in goal, I'm going to have uh, Di Cornell, um, who I was with at Peterborough. Great keeper. Um, he is now at Preston. Um he was just a, I had a really good time with him. Great guy. Um, looked after me a little bit. Um, and he's had a, a great career as well. Um, so he's in goal. And then centre-back, um, I've gone with Andrew Boyce, who I was with at Eastleigh. Um, and the reason why I've gone with him is because I had a great relationship with him um, for the whole season that year next to me. He played next to me. He played together every game, basically. Um, and he was just a yeah, really good someone to play with, um, and he let me basically go and do whatever I wanted, and I knew he was behind me, me, which what I did, and <laughs> I had a very good season that year. Um, so that's why I've gone with him in there. Um, and then my midfielders um, are going to be on this side. I'll go for Will Smallbone, who is doing very well at the moment on loan at Stoke from Southampton. Um, so I was with him, I was with Will at Southampton age groups from under 8s to under 16s. Um, so he's done really well there, uh, made his debut for the first team, played a few times, played for Ireland as well on the international break, just gone and done really well, got man of the match. Um, yeah, so he, he did very well. Um, so yeah, Will's going in there. Um, and then on this side, I'm going to go with uh, George Grant, who again, who I was with at uh, Peterborough. Yeah. Um, and is now at Hearts. Um, had a great season a couple of years ago in League One with Lincoln. Um, great player. Feet, feet are a joke. Unbelievable. Was that um, COVID year he was at Lincoln? Yes, it was yeah, COVID year. Yeah, we were up there. Yes, you yeah. would have done. Yes, he had a... Um, I think he scored like 17 goals or something from yeah, midfield. He done well that yeah. year. He done very well. Um, and then I was with him uh, for the first part of last year at Peterborough. Great guy. Um, feet are just technically brilliant. Um, and he's, he's doing really well at Hearts at the moment. And then kind of as like a false nine-ish, say these three are going to be rotating, um, I'm going with Sammy Smodix. Lech. Oh. Follows us on TikTok, doesn't he? Yeah. Does he? Yeah, he yeah. does. He's one of the first like early doors followers yeah. he was. Great guy, great lad. Like, that just He's the joker of the changing room. Yeah. Um, was with him, obviously, last year at Peterborough, um, and he's doing fantastically well at, at Blackburn. They're flying high yeah. at the moment. So, yeah, Smod is going in there. Um, and say with these three in midfield, there's just going to be rotation combinations all round, and then Boise just just keeping it solid at the back and dying goal as well. Um, so then the gaffer, it was too difficult to pick one. I've had some great, I've been lucky enough to play with some great gaffers um, growing up. Um, so I have to shout them all out really. So uh, Bogner Regis, my, they gave me my first chance 
um, in men's football, Robbie Blake, um, who played in the Prem for, yeah, play for Burnley, scored yes. a banger against Man United. Yes. Volley, which he showed me about a hundred times. Yeah, you, you said him earlier, and I was yeah, thinking, Robbie Blake, Burnley. I he him. scored a great. To, I think they beat Man United one 0 and he scored yeah, a, um, a great good, volley. Good so player. him and, and Jack Pierce, who's a who's a legend in, in non-league, um, they gave me my first chance at men's football um, for Bognar. I had a great season there, um, and then went to Hungerford and had uh, Ian Herron. Um, Obviously, used to play for us. Used to play here. Used to play here, Spud. So. Um, he gave me the chance and he made me captain as well after three months there. So he gave me a yeah. chance to show what I can do um, another platform and then went to, went on to Eastleigh with, with Ben Strevens. Um, again, just kind of it was brilliant for my career. Um, I then got obviously the move to Peterborough and Darren Ferguson, who I'll always be grateful for, for, for giving me my, uh, my debut in the championship, um, which, was a, which was a very proud moment for, for me and my family. So that was nice. And then obviously... Uh, uh, ben Garner last year as well and uh, just anyone all the managers that have given me kind of a platform to go and an opportunity yeah. and platforms to go and, go and show what I can do um, have been brilliant with me so any of them uh, I'd be I'd be happy Perfect. with Is there any players that were close to getting in the team yeah. and then Yes a lot of players were close from <laughs> I, a lot of guys from the Swindon team last year a few guys from, from this year as well but I didn't want to go uh, I didn't want to go down that route just since not <laughs> Just so people didn't get feel left get, out. Getting battered, yeah. yeah, anything like that. So I went, uh, yeah, I went with guys from from other teams. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're all still playing. Boys is getting on a little bit. You won't mind me saying, but all the other guys are still playing, and having great careers. So um, yeah, happy with that. Perfect, great team. And kit. Oh yeah, kit. I have, I'm not just saying this. I really love this year's kit. What the home one? The home, the home one. one. The red one. The red yeah. one, I like the the pattern. The one, yeah, on, the pattern is the one we got. Beyond. Yeah, that one. The yeah. pattern on it, I think, is lovely. Um, I'm a, I, I love playing in red and white. You know, um, you know what that pattern is, don't you? So that's the pattern from the shirt there, look. Premier from ninety three, ninety four, when we were in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. So Puma replicated the pattern for the season shirt. Exactly. So it's so, yeah, brilliant. So, that's um, so that one, but I'm gonna, I'm go, I've gone for. Um, growing up at Southampton in the academy, just a few, was quite a while ago now. There was an Umbro kit. It was all white with like red a red, slash. you know it, the red slash across. Yeah. Do you know who I think of when I see that kit? Ricky Lambert. Ricky Lambert. Because he was scoring goals. It's just bad goals that season. And I was in the academy at the time, but that was my f growing up. I used to lo I loved that kit. Yeah. Um, I think I even, I even had it when I bought it as well because it was it was brilliant. Um, so that that's probably my number that's one. Your kit. That's my kit. Decent. I, like I would that. say you brought a memory back there. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. It's been class. Love it. Yeah, so yeah, I'll have that, yeah. and this week I'm going to take the pen. Yeah, don't do it, <laughs> so Johnny not, Williams, and not click we're not it for ten minutes. The pen all the way through. Right then, Joe. Um, let's take it all the way back to the start of your life. So obviously, born in Swindon. Now obviously playing for Swindon, which is unbelievable. Um, so can you remember, like, how old were you when you first started playing? So I would have been kind of five. Yeah. Um, and I was. So originally, I wasn't actually playing for a team. I was just went around my, my mate's house, you know, from preschool or, or whatever. And basically, the, the dad of, of my mate um, basically came and told my mum my and dad, and he went, just like, Joe's really good. Yeah. Bring him along to Rorton Juniors. Um, so that was kind of how it started. Uh, went along to Rorton. Um, was there for probably a year and a half. Um, and I actually then, <laughs> I, I was on trial at Southampton and Swindon at the same time. So then, yeah, because when we were looking at <laughs> when we were looking at your career, we were looking at like why did he never like play for Swindon or have trials for Swindon? But obviously that's the reason. yeah, that's why I was. So I, I yeah, yes, <laughs> it was. I had the kind of the choice between the two, and I don't want to sound bad <laughs> anyway. But at the time, um, Southampton were a lot higher, so I went to Southampton um, and was brilliant. Yeah, I had nine years there. So Where um, did, so did you go directly to Southampton, or were you at the Saturday Centre in Bath, or? Well, you know that from, from Bath, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, so, you know. <laughs> so you yeah. went that way and so then went, down from Yeah, there. so for a yeah. few months I was at uh, the Bath Centre yeah. um, for Southampton um, and then, yeah, went on from there to the... Because a lot of the lads get like, like, I think even Gareth Bell's journey went through that centre. Yeah. So he was at Cardiff, wasn't he? And then mm -hmm. to Bath and was. then on when he was old enough to go all the way to Southampton. So what, yeah. so I did so the same what age were you there, when you first started at Southampton then? Seven. 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 I was there. And you um, were there. How many years did you just say? Nine years. So no. till I was sixteen. Um, till under yes, from under kind of under sevens till under sixteens. Yeah. 
How did you find that? Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, loved it. Um, I wouldn't be the player I am today without the time I spent there and the coaching I had. I'm extremely grateful for that. Um, and it was yeah, it was pretty cool as well growing up playing for them. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's still a big club for me that I love, and I hope I wish do well, and hopefully they can get out of the situation they're in this year um, because I still support them. I think they're brilliant. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed my time there. Met some met some great people and uh, had a lot of great uh, coaching, which I'll always be grateful for. And then obviously you went on to Yeovil. Is that right? So you went on to Yeovil. How did that come about then? Yeah, so getting released from Southampton then um, at the Scholar. Before getting a Scholar, I didn't get a Scholar. I got released. Um, that was kind of, that was tough. Yeah. Because growing up, I just, as a young boy, and I'd been at the club for so long. It was kind of the first new team that I've been into. And I went on trial at a few places and didn't quite work out. Um, and then I went to Yeovil. Um, and uh, it was uh, a bit of a, a bit of a reality check, a bit of a shock. Yeah, so really. You're you about sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. 16. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did well. And I did well on my trial games there, um, and then they, they offered me a, a two year scholarship, um, which was brilliant. And it was I'll, I'll never forget. In my one of the first couple of months, I was injured. I think for the first game of the season, and uh, basically the academy manager at Yeovil was pulled me. He's gone, Joe, because I wasn't playing. He's gone, Joe. Can you um can you ref or can you do be linesman for the under 16s game? The, the linesman's not turned yeah. up, <laughs> and I've uh, obviously oh, I've just yeah, come from Southampton, right and I was obviously used to <laughs> not used to that. So I've, I, I was like, oh really? And I was okay, like, yeah, of course, okay. yeah, yeah, of course. So I did it, and it was, uh, but it was, it was like, it humbled me a little bit, and it, it yeah, and I course. think I needed that. Um, so that was that was good, and then I had a great great time at um, at Yeovil in the academy, and the guys I met there. Um, so how did good. that work? Did you were you in digs or did you travel down? every yes so I was I was in digs yeah Yeah. um but so yeah it was actually after like two weeks after my 16th birthday I just I packed everything up and I moved down to the oval and basically rocked up on the doorstep of a a, obviously it's not too far but it's sort of that distance a bit too far and and, uh, I stayed with a lovely family there um the mum was called Tina and the son was called Marcus and I had a they were brilliant with me um I was luckily not like it wasn't too difficult to make that transition because at Southampton um kind of in 15s and 16s so year 10 11 at school yeah I only went to school two days a week yeah. right. for year 10, 11, so Monday, Monday release, and Friday because I would do day release Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday at Southampton. So I was already in digs at Southampton Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. See, they're, but they're the kind of people that don't, no one realises exist. Yeah. The people that take players in when it's, they're coming through at a younger age and like they really help to kind of mould the young person that, that you become. Because there must we've, be hundreds and thousands yeah, of we, them. We've yeah, we've spoken to, to lots of other players that come through. So, for example, Joel McGregor yeah. has been with Harry Parsons' family, which has really helped Joel because he's down the road rather than yeah. having to travel because he's Bristol-based and everything else. And there, there's loads of those families that, oh, that don't even get... The host, host families are brilliant. Yeah. I've stayed yeah. in so many during my career. I've been lucky enough to stay with some, some lovely people. And it's, so it's quite weird and quite funny because literally, I literally just rock up with, with my suitcase and my bag like <laughs> yeah. that and knock on the door and I'm just like, hi, I'm just coming to live yeah. with you now. Um, but obviously, that's the first couple of nights you just get used to each other, and then it's you may say you meet some lovely people, and I'm very grateful for for everyone that's like looked after me um, growing up. Definitely. So, so the two years at Yeovil come to an end. Yeah. How did the transfer to Brighton come up come along? Then? So I actually got it was it was quite uh, interesting, really. So I actually got released from Yeovil. Yeah. Because um, it was into the um, going into the pro contracts, and 18, I think yeah, yeah from eighteen going into the and because there was no twenty threes at Yeovil, straight the first team, mm-hmm. and the manager basically said thought that I wasn't ready for first team, um, so I got released from Yeovil, but it was kind of weird because literally as I walked out of the office, um, there was a a Brighton scout there and a Southampton scout there, um, and they both basically said to to come back on trial. So, so I had to Southampton to go back on trial and then to Brighton to, to go on trial. Yeah. So I actually had the opportunity to go back to Southampton. What made you choose Brighton then? I guess you'd already been at Southampton. Yeah, so it was really weird. So I went to... Oh, a microphone. I went to, um, went to both clubs again. Yeah. And obviously yeah, Southampton I had a great affiliation with. But I just thought I'd try something new. I fancied mm-hmm. something new and I'd really got a good feel from Brighton. I really enjoyed my, t- my trial there. I did really well. Um, and they, they said they offered me my first pro contract, which was, again, a proud moment for me and my family driving down to the Amex and um, signing my first pro deal. Um, so, yeah, that's how that kind of came, came about. Going back to what you just said there, so obviously you were 18 when you got released from Yeovil and they said you weren't ready. Teams not having an under 23s, how hard is that for somebody that's 18 and when they say it's not ready? 
the teams that haven't got the twenty threes, it must be so difficult because the jump's so big between first team and eighteen. So it must have been hard for you, like when you got to yeah, that, definitely a hundred percent. But again, it's just then how clubs how they choose to do yeah, things. Every club's different. Every club's they? different, yeah. and how they how they view how the academy. Yeah, how they run the club and. Yeah different stuff like that and whether they would have signed me and then loaned me out to get me that experience or not yeah. or they actually ended up releasing every single player that year Mad. Um, and over the two years I think there's five guys that went on to sign pro deals at Prem Clubs so it's just how, it's just how different clubs yeah, do things deal, um, and I probably wasn't ready to go straight into they were in League 2 at the time yeah. um, to go straight into League 2 um, but that's just how it is and it? It, each, <laughs> each meeting you have it never gets any easier um, I was thankful I, was, I had my dad next to me and those yeah, those those meetings are never easy. But. So, so Brighton then. So you've gone to Brighton. Was it when you first joined there? Did you go on loan to Bognor Regis? Was that the first year you went on loan, or had you did you have a year? At- so it was yeah. So I, I had a one year contract at Brighton. Yeah. Um, and again, there was something new that I wasn't used to. Our first game was for the twenty threes was Liverpool, and uh, basically the day before the, the day before, I'm just in digs, just at home, just thinking I got a game the next day, and the manager rings me. And he says, Joe, you, like, you're going to miss out tomorrow on the squad. You're not going to be involved. Yeah. And I, I didn't know what that meant because I'd just come from Yeovil where if you were fit, you're basically in the squad. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we I mean, did not many players. Yeah. So I basically I rang my dad and I was like, dad, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm, I didn't even know that was a fi- That didn't even cross my mind. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. even a thing. Yeah. Um, so that helped me, again, w- was a good lesson to learn, really. Um, and I wasn't involved the first few games. So... Um, we play, actually played against Bognor Regis in a pre-season friendly so, yeah, um, and I did well and then from that it was it was uh, kind of late on in the window. What league were they in at the time? So that's one below Conference South. Right. Um, so Southern Premier or whatever. Southern Prem or the, whatever, the, yeah, whatever the equivalent, the equivalent is. is, yeah. Um, so it was kind of late on and I got a call, the 23th manager again rang me and said just come into the club and I went into to Brighton and he basically said that there's an, an opportunity to go to Bognor um, and that was quite scary. Um because obviously it was at Southampton, Yeovil did really well, just signed a, my first pro contract Expecting at another Prem sort. club. I didn't really view it that I was going to be doing that. And then I had, to, I had Bognor Regis in front of me, which at the time was obviously a, another, another world. How, so, How um, beneficial was that for you to just suddenly have that hit you and then just go straight out on loan? Oh, I was, mean, you played 30 plus games, did you? Yes, 30 plus games because yeah. I, um, I missed the first few, but then went in 30 plus games. It's um, important for somebody at a young age. Oh, it? it's, it's, Rather than be... You that must have year, learned so much more. Oh, do you think it definitely that year was just fantastic for me, um, and that's why I'm always grateful to to Robbie and and, and Jack Pierce for for taking me there because I loved it. The fans there were brilliant. The pitch was good um, for that level. I had a great connection with the fans. Mm. Really enjoyed it and the players. Won um, I won Player of the Year there as well. So I had a fantastic season. It just showed. I learned so much about men's football, yeah. um, and it was kind of it's pretty cool. I had kind of the best of both worlds because in the week yeah. I'd be. Training Still training at Brighton, Brighton. with, yeah. and even sometimes with the first team, and I'd be with a foot prem with a prem club training every week, and then I'd go and play, and I'd get proper men's football, and I'll never forget. There was I loved it so much that there was a it was a Wednesday night or something like that, um, and I, it was the Brighton Twenty Threes were playing Bayern Munich, um, yeah. just just a friendly at the training ground, and I went and I was obviously watching it there, um, and there was probably about 50 people there, just agents and fans and all that. And then I went and played against Bognor versus Worthing, a local, local derby in front of okay. like 1,500 people on the Saturday. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is like amazing. Like, I've just watched <laughs> that game yeah. in the week, yeah. which yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah. But I'd rather like this. I'm learning so, so much, much more cool. from this. Yeah. The fans, the, the rivalry, the, the derby, everything about it and just men's football. And uh, yeah, so that year was just was fantastic for me. Was there anyone else in your age group at Brighton that year that's come through and doing really well now? Or? Um, so who's so is uh, Aaron Connolly? Yeah. Um, he's on loan at Hull now. Yeah. Um, he broke into the the first team. Steve Azate, who was here. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I had a great relationship with, with Steve. We got on really well. So he's a, he's on loan at Standard Liège. Is, yeah. um, is he? Yeah. This yes. Is he now? Yeah. This season. He was good when he was here. Too. Yeah, he was decent. Yeah. Um, who? Um, Trying to think. Oh, Victor Gyokarez, who's doing fantastic for Coventry. Yeah. Um, Coventry top scorer this season. Um, fantastic so player. Quite a good year group then, really. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Um, we had John Davis, who's at Wrexham. Will Collows at Stockport, who's doing well. Um, yeah, we, we really had a... Was Rob Punt already here, then? He's a, yes. He's a good, 
Is he a few years old? He was a couple of years old. I spoke to obviously Rob last year about it, but yeah, he was a, a couple of years. Couple um, years old, yeah, yeah a couple of years old. So that year come to an end, and your time there was done, wasn't it? So you then come to Hungerford, didn't you? So how did that come about? Yeah. So again, at the end of my Brighton contract, sat down. They sat me down. And they basically said, unfortunately, Joe, it's not yeah. what you want to hear. And that was the third time in four years I've been told that. And it, as I said, it never gets any easier. Yeah. Um, and you just. Uh, it's obviously telling your family it's, it's never nice. But there's two um, ways you can go with that. You can either go out there with the attitude, I'm going to prove more wrong. Yeah. Or you can just kind Which of... Which what you've done. Yeah. You can just kind of like, go, oh, it's just not for me. I'm not good enough. Exactly. And, it's, and the, the ones that go, I'm going to go and prove everyone wrong, they're the ones that end up making it. Yeah. So all of those little knockbacks, they make you more resilient. They make you more determined. They've made a person... You were only 19 today. at this time, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, so this so was, you already had a yeah. year playing men's football at yeah. a decent level. And then you've come to Hungerford. And yeah. you've had another year from 19 to 20. Yeah, so where was, you've had another... You've played loads yeah. of games again, didn't you? I exactly. You like was, four or five goals. I did, yeah. Again, I had a good season that so. year. But it was... So how it kind of happened, it was it's quite funny, really. Um... I basically no one, no one, no one knows this actually, but my dad and I we wrote to every single one of the, the clubs in the EFL with like a CV yeah. um, of myself um, to every club from the Champ League One and League Two. We wrote to every club. Yeah. Um, only got a few responses, or whatever. They basically they just kind of said just to go and get men's football again and keep yeah. going, learning that way. And it was actually Ian Heron um, knew my brother obviously from growing up in Swindon, he knew my brother, and he basically messaged him and, and was initially asking if he could take me on loan from Brighton. He didn't realise I'd been released. Yeah. Um, and then I obviously, he said, come down and just start training. And I went down and for pre-season and was training there. Um, and then, yeah, signed, I ended up signing there. Um, and again, it was brilliant. But that was, the next part was, that was part-time football. Mm. So that's the kind of the first time, obviously, when you're a kid growing up, you just think you're going to be a footballer and it's, you're not going to have to do that. Train. Day, yeah. Exactly. And that was the first year I actually had to go and came home. My mum went, you need to get a job. So uh, I ended up for six months, I worked at Wasdale's factory at Junction 16, opposite the Ferrari garage, just packing pills, um, six till two every day, and then going, Crazy, to, and then going, to, going to, uh, to, tr to training after, yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that was a bit, and then I ended up, I did that for six months and then ended up being like a um, PE teacher help, helping out at St Luke's school and some other some other schools as well just uh, being a TA yeah. um, and I did that till till the end of the season so but at Hungerford I'd, again that made me realise how much I really wanted it yeah. and how much yeah. I, how hard I was willing to work because I was going through all that and then getting up going and training push and you, go, going out. to games but obviously Ian Heron was brilliant with me with that and then made me captain as well after three months so at 19 being club captain was fantastic I think I really loved yeah. I loved doing that um and uh, yeah, I had a, a really great season. I met some great people who I'm yeah. still friends with now at yeah. Hungerford. And yeah, it was uh, again another another great season. And just another year there, and then obviously Eastley. And then yeah, and then Eastley, um, the Eastley deal kind of happened. And my my goal was just to get back into first team, uh, into full time football yeah. Yeah. after Hungerford, and to get back as quickly as possible. And thankfully, I got the opportunity to do that at Eastley. Um, I had a two-year contract there, which was which was nice, nice bit of security um, after just obviously for look, only being on one-year deals, yeah, 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 bouncing around a little bit. So um, had uh, went to Eastley, Ben Strems as the manager, and the the faith he showed in me was was brilliant. Yeah. Um, and again, it was just another place I could go and flourish. It's Fantastic a good setup club down there, isn't it? We it went is, there yeah. pre-season and played them. It is. It's, it's a really good setup. I was surprised really by, by how good the setup was, and obviously they're doing really well this season. Yeah, they are doing well this year in the, in the playoffs. Moment. They are, yeah. And we we only just missed out that year, um, but I had, I had a great time there. Really good time. Again, met some great people. I had a great manager. Um, was able to go out there and, and improve so much. Um, and I, I yeah, I had a great season. And then when, when Peterborough come in calling, when was that? Was that the so it was. With that, so that kind of happened. So I had a great season at, at Eastleigh. And if I'm going to be honest, I thought I was going to be getting a move pretty soon after the season ended. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it didn't happen. Um, didn't happen all the whole summer. Nothing, nothing, nothing from my agent. Um, and then went, actually went back to pre-season for the next year at Eastleigh. Yeah. Um, was there for two weeks. And then we had a game against Met Police um, on the Saturday. And uh, I played in that. Uh, played well, just a pre-season game, but I played well and, and Barry Fry was there. Um, and then... <laughs> Barry, Fry <was> there. <laughs> Barry, Barry Fry was there I'm watching out, me. <laughs> <laughs> so Baz was there watching and then on the Monday my agent gave me the call and he said that um, 
Peter are going to pay your release clause and, and that's all done. So I then had a game on the Tuesday. So he's basically like, you can't tell anyone. Go, like, go to the game tomorrow still because it's not all gone through yet. And I basically went to the game still thinking I'm going to play because I haven't got the call saying I'm, yeah, I'm out. And I literally sat in the changing room and the, the manager kind of knew that something could happen. I was actually in the changing room doing the team talk before and he rings me and I go out, step outside on the pitch and he basically tells me it's all done. They've pulled you from the game. It's all gone through. Um, you're driving up there on Thursday, pack your stuff and you're going to sign. So two days later, I packed all my stuff up in the car. And where were well. they? League, League one or championship? Championship. 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 That's incredible, isn't it? So these few years, like, battling through all these rejections, sort of, and then that come about, it must have been... Yeah. You must have been buzzing. Yeah, you oh, must have been like, yeah. what is going on? <laughs> like, 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 I've so hard. Like, I thought, credit, like, credit to you like, for the, you know the work mean? that you put in. Like. It's brilliant. It's my, obviously a special moment when I got the call from my agent. He already told my dad. So my dad already knew. Called my dad. Called my brother. Yeah. Ran in. Told my mum. She was crying. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was lovely. Um, a great moment. Um, as I say, from the, the Monday and into the Thursday, I'd literally I'd packed everything up and I'd moved up to... Peter and a week later I put my deposit down on my first house there so it all my life had changed yeah. so good that's how football works but um, it all changed uh, yeah very quickly and then a week and a half after that I started the first um, game of the season away at Luton in the championship so oh, what and, stadium uh, that is to make oh, oh, yeah. Kenworth Road Kenworth. oh the atmosphere Listen, we lost 3-0 but the, I'll never forget because the atmosphere was fantastic note, yeah. it was brilliant and my family were there which was special and the first thing I noticed in the changing room when I got there was one of the things, you know, when there's like snacks out and different stuff out like that that the club yeah. put out, yeah. one of the things was um, caffeine gum on the side. And that was what I'd literally packed. I'd packed that exact health span caffeine gum packet yeah. two years earlier in the factory. I'd literally done that. So that was quite a cool. That made me smile at the, at the time as well. So that was, that yeah. was pretty cool. No, I was decent. I like that a lot. So you're at Peterborough. And then how do you end up on loan here? What <laughs> happened? How, like... Yeah. From, from making that debut in the championship, obviously we get you on loan, and that's brilliant because we were like, "How are we getting a player from Peterborough like in on loan?" Yeah. Like, so what happened there? How was that? So it's, I played a few. I think I started five, six games um, first part of the season, um, and uh, Darren Ferguson uh, was the manager. Um, he was brilliant with me, nothing but honest, um, and he right. gave me my debut. And yeah, so that's, that's all I can ask for, and it's, yeah. it's brilliant. Um, so I'm very grateful to him. Um, but I'd never, obviously, the three previous years, I'd played every game. Literally every game. Every game yeah. that was on, I was fit for, yeah. I was playing. Yeah. Um, so I found it quite difficult um, the first part of the season because, obviously, it's quite hard to go straight from non, like, non-league to championship and jump straight into the team. And yeah. I, uh, I didn't go straight into the team. But obviously, I started the first game, but I was at left wing and then... They already had kind of a, a set left back there and he, was doing, he did really well, to be fair. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine and he, he did really well there. Um, so... It didn't I never I never quite played the, as many games as I would like, yeah, um, and I actually really struggled with that. And I went into quite a dark place at that that time because I I didn't really know how to deal with it in terms quite of a not change, isn't quite it? a change and, and not yeah. playing and, and obviously moving up to Peterborough and it was it was quite tough. So um, obviously speaking with my agent and my family, we thought the best thing to do was to to go on loan um, to get as many games as I can. And it happened really late into the window because people were kind of they didn't really want to let me go, and it was. Um, so on the, the deadline day was on the Monday and it was on the Saturday. There was a few injuries at Peterborough and they actually started and played against Sheffield United right. um, at home on the Saturday and then on the, the Monday. that's what we were saying, wasn't it? Yeah. He played for them like yeah. <laughs> two days ago. I remember that. Like, what was, what, like, and it, that's, that's what I mean. That? And then it was, I knew Swindon were interested kind of the whole window, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as soon as I heard, like early on in the window, obviously with um, the gaffer that was here last year and the way he liked to play football, yeah. um, it sort of suited me so all like down to a T really it was perfect but Peterborough weren't letting me go but thankfully Swindon stayed kind of interested the whole window course, yeah. and then thankfully got to the last day of the window late and uh, I spoke to, to Peterborough and, and the manager and Darren Ferguson and Barry Fry and I was on the phone with them quite late and they both in the end went yeah you, you can go we'll let you go and, and get some games so that was all done pretty pretty quick and pretty late on um but yeah, it was. I say once Swindon were interested, that was that just obviously coming home and, and yeah. How was easy was that decision for you? Because obviously, as we said at the start, you were born in Swindon, grew up in Swindon. Obviously, watched a lot of games when you were younger. So how buzzing were you with coming back to Swindon? 
Oh, I was to say, as soon as Swindon were interested, and I so knew the project that was going on here and the team that we had last year, it was brilliant. And it was, I suppose, it's nice to be at home in a way as well. Oh, of course, it is. Yeah. Um, nice to go home and have the mums cooking as well. Yeah. Um, so I missed that. So that was nice I to come back. That's the best digs. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's the best digs. So <laughs> coming home, it was just perfect, and it just all seemed just to fall into place. Um, and and yeah, and then yeah, that was it. So I signed on the Monday. I missed the game on the Tuesday, which was frustrating because we didn't get it done in time. Yeah. I had to be done by twelve o'clock on the Monday, and we yeah. we missed it. So I could, it was I think it was the Crawley at home. Right. I yeah. think we drew one all. Yeah. Um, so I was in the stand watching that, yeah. and then the Exeter game on the Saturday, which uh, the celebration in front of the town, <laughs> <laughs> which was uh, brilliant. Yeah, I get loved it. Um, came straight into the team, played, scored. It was brilliant. But again, another for me. That game was brilliant in so many ways, but also looking back on it now, another lesson because it told me that football was really not how you expect it to go. Because basically during that game, I was thinking I've scored, we won the up, it's my debut. Yeah, yeah. And then they just come through on a tunnel. I've just got man of the match. This is brilliant. My fan, my family's all up in the stand all watching me. Sudden. It's brilliant. And then all of a sudden, two late goals and we lose two one. And again, that just at the time, obviously it was it was. Uh, quite frustrating but looking back on it now it was, again it was another fantastic lesson that I learned yeah. um, and that you um, it doesn't I say football never really comes how you want it to so mm. but the whole day was just brilliant and uh, obviously scoring and then um, I had a really good run of games um, ten, which was I fantastic it, 10 yeah. you played wasn't it played obviously ten. unfortunately you got your injury <laughs> yeah. which cut your season short yes which was frustrating for us and for you oh, I don't wish any injuries on anybody honestly yeah. it's uh, I was playing well Team were doing well. We had a really good chance to get playoffs, um, and then you get injured, and it's just yes, yeah, it's, it's a killer. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. Um, it's hard. And then being here, I chose to stay here and do all my rehab and stuff here, um, and support the boys. Um, you come to most of the games, didn't you? Yeah, I, I tried to as much as I can, and yeah, it was it was it was tough. It was tough. Okay, so from a completely different viewpoint, so you're on loan from another club. You're injured, but you've stayed here to do your rehab. We've obviously spoken about it from a kit man's point of view. We've had Willow talk about it from his point of view from being on the pitch. What was Port Vale and the playoffs like for you watching as an injured player? It was... uh, It's a mix of emotions, a real mix. I was at the... I was at the home, the first leg, the home game. Yeah. Um, but then, because of the uh, the second leg, because I had to be in at Peterborough the next day um, and train, I couldn't um, and do my rehab. I couldn't go to it. So I was at, I was at my house in Peterborough watching it. Yeah. Um, obviously, the the home leg crowd atmosphere, mm. absolutely fantastic, brilliant. We win. It's fantastic. Um, and. I'm buzzing for the boys. Obviously, it was a brilliant result for the club. But at the same time, I'm just like, this is just... I really wish I could have been out there. I yeah, wish nothing more than to be out there. Um, it's the type of games you want to be in. Oh, they're, the, they're the best games to play yeah. in. So it, was, it made it... They come around as often as you want them to. Exactly. And it made it harder, obviously being injured and all that. But at the same time, it was fantastic for the club and I supported the boys and it was brilliant. And I'm so glad they did so well in the first leg. And then second leg I was convinced we were going to go we were going to it was going to be not comfortable but we were going to get the job done I was yeah. really convinced of it yeah, so, were we. so was everyone yeah, so I think even maybe the that was the downfall yeah. uh, I, th- I think you're right maybe I Possibly. feel like we were so confident that nobody felt like there was any way we could lose I think and you're right I feel like if we had a little bit of edge about us then it might have been slightly I, th- different. I think you're right in Port Vale they turned it into their game yeah, um, certainly did. it was how they wanted to play it pitch was like this didn't water it for three days <laughs> before we got there. The fans, yeah. obviously, everyone. Cheers. Yeah, exactly. It was just like that's just happened, and obviously it went to, to penalties, and then we obviously we had the a couple of chances to couple, make it we happen. Had the but a couple of times. Exactly, but everything happens for a reason. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. a believer in that. So it obviously wasn't meant to be. But at home watching it, I'm like head in hands, like few upset because I'm. I wanted to go to Wembley with the boys, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Although I wouldn't have been playing, it was just to go and support them, it would have been with my hometown club, I would have been there as a fan as well. So It was a good group, wasn't it? Oh, it was a great group. So really disappointed, but as I say, it just wasn't meant to be Yeah, and then that year. That summer happens and you obviously go back to Peterborough for pre-season. Did you think you were going back out on loan or were you expecting to have a season there? Or um, what was going on? I was kind life? of, because I've done well um, here last year, um, I was kind of hoping this the next progression was to then go into League One because obviously Peter got relegated yeah. so they were going into League One so yeah. obviously I played League Two and I'd well, that's, that's what we thought 
for you. We thought you were going to go back there and play. And literally, my, my career, and... coming up, my career had literally gone um, the Southern Prem, mm. Conference South, Conference, and then league, playing League Two for winning last mm. year. So it, the next, just the next step for me was, and then Peter were coming down, was to go into League One and, and try and play as many games as I can. Um, unfortunately, for, for different reasons, that, that didn't happen. And I mean, we were hoping that you were going to come back in the summer. Yeah. There was, a, what, there was what... a chance, there was a chance, but unfortunately, the, the people said no. Yeah. Um, which because they they wanted they said they wanted me to stay, yeah. um, so that was out of my hands unfortunately. Um, but then it, again, it wasn't. It was a tough first part of the season. Didn't go the way I wanted it to for different politics in football and a few injuries here and there and just different different issues. Um, so it didn't happen. Um, and then I kind of knew uh, that I'll be then going on loan. I was going to push for a loan again in in, in Jan um, and. Uh, yeah, there was a few different clubs kind of interested, and unfortunately at the start of Jan, I um, injured my hamstring. Um, the last kind of twelve months, been interesting. Literally, the whole of my career, I've done, had been so lucky with injuries. Of course, yeah. Been so, and then over the when last, you look at the games you played per season. Yeah. Exactly, it's been brilliant. And, I've, and then the last twelve months, it's like they've all come as London buses. Honestly, it's yeah. it's literally I've just had. Uh, it's been a tough time. Um, so I had an injury then at the start of Jan, thinking it nothing was really going to happen. And then, yeah, I had kind of other clubs interested, thinking I was going to go to other places on deadline day. Yeah. Um, other options were on the table. I was kind of ready to go there, ready to so, sign. And then four o'clock on deadline day. Is we're talking a deadline story. Day. So a story. We're like, we're in. Because whenever it's deadline day, we're here just in case. Yeah. Something happens and we need to get a kit for a medical or we need to print up a shirt for some media or whatever it might be. Right? So we're off. We're off round the chippy because yeah. we're like I'm starving they bought pizzas in about 7 o'clock they it? had gone so we were like right we we run around the chippy magic chippy on the thing I've only just that night found out that magic chippy is called magic chippy <laughs> because it's on the magic roundabout oh I didn't know that either no, there we go. I didn't know I read it on <laughs> the wall no. and I was like <laughs> well that makes perfect sense yeah <laughs> so we get our chips uh, Bailey sends us a message uh, Joe Tomlinson will be in in a bit sorry what, what do you mean Joe Tomlinson will be in in a bit what are you talking about? This was at like seven o'clock. Yeah. So they'd be here in an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, <laughs> what do you mean? So we're like, we come back. We're like, what What do you mean? Is he coming back on loan? Are we signing him? What are we doing? We skip for that, Chippy, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so we, we get back and then we're just waiting. Like, we were almost ready to go. Yeah. And then once we heard that, we were like, like no, yeah, we're we hanging around. we got to hang around to see Joe. <laughs> like, and obviously you Joe. come in with your brother. And, uh, yeah. but honestly, yeah. but literally, I heard nothing. The whole window, I had nothing heard nothing mad, from Swindon and then four o'clock on deadline day I got the call from my agent and he basically was like what's Swindon inter- interested and I was like I want to go home do you know what I mean like yeah. let's get it done um, so it was all very quick and other stuff funny, had to be I put on hold the door at the player's entrance you, <laughs> came, you came to the door and I saw, saw you there and it was brilliant it was lovely <laughs> do you know what I mean Yay! I turned up you guys came we, and saw me we you, were buzzing off exactly, the you guys were buzzing it was brilliant I saw a load of familiar faces and again that just cemented my decision as the right one yeah. and it was brilliant and from, I actually, as you say, I met my brother, my brother came and, and met me here and I actually, once I got it all signed and all done, I went and su- we went and surprised my mum, basically, she didn't know where I was going. Right. I actually told her I, I wasn't really going anywhere. Um, and then me and my brother just walked up on, on, like, on the I'm doorstep, my mum. I'm here just for went, five, six months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, and she, she, was lo- she was loving it. Um, so, yeah, that was, again, that was a special night mm. and that was brilliant for me and it's a memory I'll have with my brother as well, coming and signing at, at a hometown club. Um, late on deadline day, which is which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so, and yeah. fans were buzzing because they love it when like a local player plays for their club. Any club that has a local player, fans buzz off it because it doesn't actually happen that often. No, not like, anymore. We haven't had obviously years before. We've had Scott Twine and the Thompson brothers that have obviously come through the academy, but it's not very often you get someone that was born in Swindon playing for Swindon. So fans buzz off that. So they were buzzing. Yeah. Definitely. Right. That's what I say. It was just it was a no-brainer. As soon as I got the call, then, that was. And then once you again, you score on your debut. Of course you do. Telling us all week, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to score. And when I score, I'm going to take my shirt off as long as it's late enough in the game because I want to show off all the work I'm doing <laughs> in the gym. And we're like, oh, don't do that, but do it because it'll be banter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's ready to do it, but then he knows he's going to get yellow. That was so, I know. And it was, I have to, I have to say, when, when, when you come on and you score that goal, and the celebration happens. You know, like when people say deja vu, it it's actually was thing. deja yeah. vu. It was proper weird. It, it really it was. Re- it was mad. And even like, 
myself, obviously I started on the bench, but then I came on and I was thinking, if when I come on, I'm, I'm going to score. Yeah. I'll just add that in my life. I've got, I've got to score here. I've got to score a, here. You scored a good number of goals for like the position. You, obviously, I know you're quite a forward, mm-hmm. like full-back. Sometimes you played on the wing, but you scored a decent number yeah. of goals. I like to say I like scoring goals as much as I, as I like stopping them. Mm. Um, so I came on and I had fantastic... When I got subbed on, the whole stadium was just brilliant. Mm. And it was, and I've actually, when I'm running over, the, the throw-in's on the far side and I'm just smiling the whole way because I'm just... Yeah. And it's amazing. And my family up in the stand, they're saying they're getting chills and telling me after and saying how brilliant it was. And Class. in the town end, they're singing my name and it's brilliant. And I'm just thinking, I've got to score here. And then it happened quicker than I even imagined it. Mm. Kind of four or five minutes into, into me coming on, I've scored. And I think even in my celebration, you can see in my face, when I've scored, I'm like, oh my, like that realisation, like, oh my gosh, like I've actually, it's actually just happened again. It actually happened. It actually happened again. <laughs> and then I went mental again. Um, and as I say, I've got some brilliant pictures, similar pictures of me and Willow and... Um, Kind of very similar to, to last year. What yeah. deja vu? Same, same end, Luckily same, the same place. Went our way and th- <laughs> yeah, thankfully, yeah. the result was there. There was no doubt about the result, so that made me feel good as well. So yeah, it was brilliant, um, and it's just fantastic. Yeah. Well, just like before we move on to the quiz that we do every time, and Jonah, we have to win this yeah. week. Don't worry, I'll try right. <laughs> to win this week. <laughs> I think it's like thirty three in points. We, so. we yeah, can, you guys yeah, are getting smashed. Can. Um, but before we move on to that, you and your professionalism. So, like, this guy, he, he's first in every single day. We're recording this at five o'clock just because we knew. It's all right, Joel's still be there at five o'clock. <laughs> so it's fine. We can just do it then. He's there before us at some mornings. <laughs> it's, it's, literally, we walked in even this morning, and there he is. He's first. He's always first on the list for rubs, like, for the massage in the morning. He's just, like, always there, working, doing everything he can do. There's something else that we've spoken about before. And it's sleep routines. Yes. And breakfast and morning yes, routines. Yes, which I'm trying to... So, Jonah, what do we... Oh, no, before we get on to myself, Jonah, what did you have for uh, uh, breakfast this morning? Breakfast today. You had nothing for no, breakfast uh, this morning. Like... So it's stop. now obviously oh, yeah. getting on to quarter past six. You, and you just, it's been a long day. If we had, we had, didn't some, have, we had some lunch. Yeah, right? you had some lunch, but you didn't have, so you didn't have oh, any you breakfast. Just, yeah, I breakfast. I'm, I'm one of them that just... I'm not like you. I know you'll get on to it in a minute. But I just rolled out of bed. I rolled out of bed. I've... I had a shower but, the night before. <laughs> I, I, I get up. But you set team. your alarm for like... Yeah. I have all my clothes Quarter past ready. Four. What time, what time did you set your first alarm? My first alarm goes off at 4.50. And the reason for that is... I get up at 4.50. You, no, you don't get up at 4.50. No, no, no. no the alarm goes off on. at 4.50. I obviously turn it off. And I'm like, I've got another hour. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like, yes, I've got another hour. And to me... <laughs> <laughs> can anyone watching or listening to this? To me, that's me starting off the day right. Can you, I'm, I'm, can you comment with, like, with what you think but of I'm this routine? I'm going to try and change it. Anyway, then I get up at quarter to six and come in. and yeah. But I need I like, to know. I like the buzz of having another hour, but I am going to try and change <laughs> it. Because Joe, as Joe's, Just stay asleep, man. As Joe's going to explain now, that hour isn't proper sleep. And Joe's going to go for his routine. Come now. on, Joe. Let's hear your routine. <laughs> all right. So, basically, it all started because I, I read a book by a guy called Nick Littlehales, who was Cristiano Ronaldo's sleep coach. He went and worked in with Man United, Arsenal, England. Yeah. Um, and he does a lot of stuff with England cycling um, and a load of athletes. And I read his book because um, I've always kind of wondered about how to improve kind of every part of my life to aid my football. Of course. And I was unsure of kind of sleep stuff. I hadn't really read too much on it. So, I read the book and he, um, I've kind of learned and created a routine from it um so i'll go to bed at the same time every single night right and i'll wake up the same time every single morning um seven and a half hours i'll get um because that's five sleep so your body basically work i don't want to get too scientific for everyone but yeah. your body works an hour and a half sleep cycles and it's five cycles a night um so i do that um 11 till 6 30 is my time because i like 6 30 it's a good time for me to then get up and come into football yeah. um, and that doesn't change even on days off no it? even on, that stays even on, on yeah that'll stay the same um, go to sleep same time wake up at the same time I'll do um, and then when I wake up in the morning first thing I do is drink a glass of water full glass of water and I'll open the blinds um, to get some some light in um, so basically I stand at the blinds whilst I'm drinking my water and get some natural light in which helps to wake me up and I've I've got one of those dawn wake alarms um, so from six o'clock in my room, it will naturally basically be like a sunrise, yeah, like mimic a sunrise, mimic a sunrise in my room. So then by six thirty, it's like a there's like a sunrise in my room basically, and it'd be nature noises that wake me up, um, and I basically jump out of bed, and I feel great. 
Um, Each to their own ideas. Yeah. It's I mean, whatever any, works, any, isn't it? Any, anyone, that's out, anyone that's out there that wants to become a professional footballer, <laughs> he's, he's just trying to justify the 450 and <laughs> That's all he's doing. I am going to try and change own. it. It's just fear of missing that alarm now. <laughs> so, yeah. I am going to try and do it. Whether, I might try and do it in the summer, to be fair. And when we're in a hotel, he sets about 10 alarms. Yeah, he gets and I'm like, Jonah, in the hotel. Turn yeah. your alarm off. Well, as, as you spoke about, because you, you've set yeah. so many now, you just get yeah. used to that noise, so you yeah. don't even wake yeah. up with them. Yeah. As I said before, if we're well, in a hotel room as well, and there's no plug by the bed, my head's gone because I'm like, I've got to then, you've got get, then up, get up to turn it off. And I'm constantly like, Back, I don't forget my phone, so I'm backwards and forwards turning these alarms off. So I end up turning his alarms off. Because now, because he has so many alarms, it, they don't even wake him up. That's right, because he's got used yeah. to it. His body's got used to it, so he'll just naturally, he can don't hear it when he's sleeping, and right. it doesn't, he thinks, oh, actually, I don't need to wake up now because I've got another I one I probably set. get too much sleep because some nights I'm asleep by nine. Exactly. Like, I, some nights I get to nine and I'm just like... But that's because you don't have breakfast. And, anyway, yeah. moving on from <laughs> Yeah, that's just that's why we're going to send people to sleep. sleep. Yeah, we, <laughs> could, we, we could be here all day talking about it. We so. could go all day yeah. talking about this. So, it is time... Quiz time. For the quiz. And as we know, Matt loves a quiz. Matt's, <laughs> Matt's behind the Matt's camera and he absolutely loves it. <laughs> um, this week, I'm Quizmaster. It's Jonah against Joe. So, let's go. I'm feeling so, it. hopefully, feeling hopefully, Jonah, <laughs> yeah. you can do it for us. Yeah. Um, the first question is just going to be about speed. Yeah. Because we've already answered it, both parts of it, in okay. our conversation. Oh, so it's the first one to say it? Yes, yeah, so, no, so, you shout your name. Yeah, shout your shout, name. So buzz in, say yeah. your name. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Right, so, Joe scored on his first debut. Who were you playing and what was the score? Yes. Extra turn, we lost 2-1. Get go. in there. I thought I might catch you up. This might get a bit confusing with Joe and Joe, huh? Well, no, wait. If he, <laughs> shout, if he shouts <laughs> Joe, I'm all good. Like, <laughs> if I say Joe, score, it's 1-0 to the player. Shock. Get in there. Uh, okay, question number two. Joe scored on his second debut. Joe, Jonah. <laughs> you said Joe first. <laughs> right, he said Jonah. He's got to try and answer right, it then. now when oh. he doesn't know answer, the question. Answer the question, go on. Harrogate. That is not the question yes. or the answer. <laughs> so, so you're out. So Joe, uh, who else scored for Swindon that day? Rush got two. Rush got two. Header and scuffy one in the corner. There you go. Yes. Two nil. To Joe Tomlinson. Well done, Jonah. Listen to the question first. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a different question to that one. I knew it was. <laughs> it's just going to be the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> I mean. uh, okay, question number three. Joe played 10 games for Swindon last season. How many of those games did we win? Oh, oh. this is a good question. Joe. Come on. Right. So let's go. For, so Harrogate. If he can say his name and say the number of games quicker than you, then... Because you said your name, but now, like, there's got to be a time fault or something. Jonah. Uh, Jonah. You put your hand up again, just in case. Five. Oh, Jonah. <laughs> Jonah. As just a guess, because I'm trying to go for the game. I know we lost against Well, now Tram you're here. wrong. <laughs> I know we, we lost against Tram. Here. Exeter, Tram, we, we lost, lost Exeter. That's not the question. The question is, how many games did we win? <laughs> If Joe can get it in the next five seconds, then he gets the point. Four. It is four. Get in there. I was going to say four as well. Three nil. But you didn't say four. You said five. <laughs> I couldn't think of many games. I, just, I knew we get lost against Exeter. It's not a straightforward What's question. That, I knew we lost nil? against Exeter and Tranmere. That's it's, three nil. It's, it's three nil. It's seven because... Yeah, we're out of seven. So oh, we'll that, get the next four then. Yeah. Okay, so I win. So I, get, I win if I get this next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah but we'll, we'll carry we'll on. Carry, we'll of course, of course, yeah. Of course we will. I'll rub it in more. Okay, which player who's played for Swindon whilst you've been here across one of your two spells, Yep. maybe two of your two spells, okay. all depends, in no particular order has played for the following teams? Mm. Port Vale, Stevenage. Jonah, Harry McCurdy. Harry McCurdy. You got all right, fair enough. Point. Well you done, Jonah. Me. Yes. Well done, well What's done. Yeah, I'll give you that. 3-1. I'm going to get the next one. You're back in. I'm going to get the oh, next one. Well done, yeah, you got that. You're back in. He's done well there. The other well, clubs well. would have been Carlisle, Crew, yeah. Newport, yeah. and then I wasn't going to say Hibs because obviously that's after Swindon, yeah. and that would have that would have given, given it away. Yeah. Um, okay. The next one is a starting eleven. So 
the rules for this one. Who's winning? Right, so you'll go first because you're losing. Who's winning? So we've got Tranmere coming up on Monday. And you played against Tranmere last year, yes, Joe? Yep. Right. So what will happen is Jonah will say a player that played in that game. Yep. And then you will say a player that played in that game. Okay. And if you get one wrong, you're out and the other person gets the thing. Got if ya. we get through the 11, we've then got the subs as well. Okay, got ya. All right. So, Jojo. Jojo. Jojo Wallacott. Honey. Yes. Brandon Cooper. Brandon Cooper. Say myself. You can say yourself. Yeah. Jake O'Brien. Jake O'Brien. Ellis. Ellis Iandolo. Lewis Reed. Here's, no. no. Yes! Is that after the game where he Come got sent on. off then? Okay. Get that in! That must have been the game that he got sent off then before. Yeah, so he was suspended, so he didn't play. Um, he played 45 games. That well, he yes. missed Tranmere away. <laughs> Get it. So, all right, let me, right, let me try um, and... So, should we, should we go through the rest of the team? Josh Davidson was up top. Yeah, JD. We've only got one life then to lose. Well, yeah, because you're not playing against two people like last time. Oh, Kurds. Well, what do you... No, he started naming him. Adam McCurdy, JD. Yeah. Um, now, someone went off early injured. Now, was it Glads that started? Or was it... I know this as well. Go on then, say it. We're just going Johnny through the Williams team. Johnny went off injured. Johnny, so yeah. Willow that went off Willow, injured. Yeah. And then, who was it that came on? Who else? Did Jaden come on? Jaden came There's on. There's two others. There's two players what, you started? missed from the start. Did you yeah. say Glads? He didn't say Glads. Oh. So Glads is another one. Glads. Who else? There's one more. The left... Easty? Nope. Who Who's on the bench? So, so midfield we had Glads, Ellis. Ellis and Willow. Oh, that's the midfield. Yeah, because Ellis plays And, and it was Kurt, oh, JD. Is it? No. no. Who started? Kurt, Kurt started left wing. Because sure. that was where we oh, fell apart a bit when Paney wasn't in the team. We had Paney and Reedy both out. And we were like, without those two. Is it one of the wingers? Nope. No. no. Did we play three at the back? Does Matt know? No, Matt doesn't know much. No, go on, put Sam Missouri. AK. Oh, it's AK. Did he be play three at the back then? I must have. Yeah, unless... Um, no, Joe played... Where did you play? I played left back. Yeah, so we played four at the back. And three in the middle and then three at the top. Oh, yeah, because Ellis yeah. played midfield. Yeah, because Ellis played in midfield. Got ya. Yeah. Uh, do we want to do the right, subs? Mm, you can uh, you should yeah, tell us the subs. Save, save the embarrassment. Jaden. Yeah. Louis Barry. Yeah. Eastie. Ricky, Parsons and Wardy. Yeah. Got ya. All right? Yeah. Yeah. So you won that. So, I, so I won that, yeah? With 4-1, yeah. Four four one. One. yeah so I, I, I shouldn't have gone for... Well, I thought... I should have gone for Reedy because I thought Reedy played, but I was going to say, if I knew I had one... Well, you shouldn't have gone for Reedy because he wouldn't play. What do you mean, if you knew you had one life? <laughs> you had two <laughs> lives last time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he had two lives last question, time because he was playing against Salt and Fraser. I just play for pride now. So if one of them were out, then it, they could yep. still go. So... It makes sense to only have one life, no? I'll play yeah, for, I'll say for pride. And I did say, if you get one wrong, you're out. Yeah, yeah, I've won, that's, that's yeah we'll, we'll do any other questions, but I've won already, that's so that's enough. fine. Okay, so question number six. According to the Swindon Town website, and this question is basically for Callum, because Callum says I'm wrong, but his own website says he's right. Um, according to the Swindon Town website, what is the official capacity of the county ground? Oh, God, here we go. All right. And it's good for Callum, because he's been sitting in every seat, so he should know. Is it... <laughs> so, Joe... Is it closest, is it? Well, yeah, it'll be close. There goes the calendar. <laughs> that's the calendar. That's the calendar. That's yeah. available in the shop. That's available in the shop. If you want to go and get one, it's calendar now on the floor. Calendar accidentally now. did that. Go on. Attendance. Uh, go Joe, 14,592. Incorrect. 15,000. Yeah. 260. Incorrect, but closer. It's 15,547. Ah, oh, I said 15. All right, got you. All right, you, you can have that one. Yeah, yeah, so you, get, yeah you were closer. This four, two, four, yeah. two. four, two. Four, two. So you've got two points, which is I the don't. same as what I got last mm. time. So if you get one more, this is our That's best a new ever record. performance. Make it Still lost, but a new record. Yeah, but 4 3 then. You can make it 4 3, which is our best ever performance. So come on, Jonah. Well, I'm not sure you still lost, but. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it's still better than. <laughs> I lost 7 0 and he lost 8 yeah. 1. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, okay, question seven. 29 years ago, Swindon Town were in the Premier League. And I say 29 because next year is the 30-year anniversary of us being in the Premier League. Okay. We famously held the record for lowest points. But how many points did we actually get? Joe, 17. Nope. 
We won five games. You trying to count five times straight? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say 21. Nope. You're closer. It was 30. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we actually got 30 points. From me. 30 points was the lowest. I know we won Record five time. games. Was it? Time. Yeah, it was 93. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, it, must have, it must have been that, wasn't it? Derby. Yeah. I know, Dar I know oh, Derby. 11. I know there Derby was more games. one to... 11. They're the lowest now. Take that. And I think we conceded over 100 goals, which was a record at the time as well. Yeah. It's not surprising. Like 101 or 102 or something. It's not surprising. So, yeah, some, some records in there. But we did beat Tottenham. Yeah. You know. Good but there you go. So there's the quiz. Joe wins. Sure. Did I, was it 4 3 then? 4 3. Oh, four, three. Oh, our yeah, best yeah, well ever performance, Joe. Well done. I'll take that. Well done. I can't believe you're celebrating a loss, but. <laughs> hey, you've got to take the little wins. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's all those knockbacks. It's a work, it's a work in progress. If we're getting better yeah, every true, week. Yeah, true, you're to right. To be fair, you know if I mean? my alarm hadn't gone off at 4.50 this morning, I think I would have done all right. If I had the I same sleep as you, yeah. I thought, there you go. I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think if you had gone in on the sleep pattern, you wouldn't have said reading. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I think I changed. If he'd had breakfast, if he'd had breakfast, he'd have said eight reading instead of reading. It's all the little things that make a difference. It is all the little things that make a difference. That's Tesco, mate. There we go then. Yep. Tesco. Cool. So I think that about wraps us up. Um, as usual, go and follow us on all the socials, uh, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's all there. Um, yeah, all of the previous episodes with our previous guests are available on the club's official YouTube channel. Um, podcasts are available everywhere you can get a podcast. Literally everywhere you can get a podcast. Um, other than that, what have we got game-wise? So We're at home tomorrow to Mansfield. Mansfield. And then we're away to Tranmere on Monday. So tickets are still available for both games. Let's go and grab them. Come fill the county ground tomorrow. Make Hopefully it really good get Easter. Points, yeah, get your six points. And then you never know. Could still be on. 100%. I think. Eight games left, eight wins. It's doable. But even then, if you win the right games, it doesn't even necessarily 100%. have to be eight yeah, wins. Yeah. But. It's been know. a pleasure. Thanks for coming on, Joe. Thank you very much, really guys. It's been it. a pleasure. Yeah. Lovely. Really enjoyed it. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. <laughs>